the second time we've seen this rider on this channel, and it seems to be that Ego is driving how he's riding and not safety. Let's not do that and let's focus on what we can do to prevent any type of accident or close call for ourselves. Hell, man. All right, everybody, let's learn about this guy. Once again, if you want to see his previous crash, check out yesterday's video. There's going to be a link in the first comment to do that. And there's also going to be a link in the description of this full video. He did actually post a little bit more, but I wanted to focus on the crash itself. That's what we we're trying to learn from. So like I said, uh, learn from where let's learn about what he did right, what he did wrong, and then use that information for ourselves. So first, he's doing really well with the speed. He's going 20 kilometers an hour. I'm just kidding, guys. If you're going to be posting Posting this type of stuff on the internet you have to know that somebody's gonna assume that you're speeding and that's what we're gonna do here we're assuming that he's speeding he's not going 20 kilometers an hour and he's going to be taking really sharp turns that are blind at a high rate of speed and it's not good he's also not wearing any gear now that is our insurance policy for our body is that we're gonna scrape up that gear if we crash that way we don't scrape up our skin so remember everybody at GAT all the gear all the time also, Ego, you're going to see in his full video that he's actually riding with a few buddies here, and he's in the lead. So he's probably speeding quite a bit just so he can you know, stay ahead of them and have them keep up with him. That's an Ego peer pressure type thing, so let's not do that. So what he did wrong, well, high rate of speed, massive Ego, lack of gear. What he did right, good editing skills. So now he's going 20 kilometers an hour, and nobody knows the difference. That's all I can figure out because just like his previous video, he's making poor judgments and he's making very bad, high risk, low skill type maneuvers here. Let's move on to this part right here. Actually, let's go back a little bit. You're going to see right here it says slow. Take that as a clue that you should probably be going slow. He also is going to go to a very sharp turn, like I said, blind turn, and he's going to go a little bit wide and low side. So he's going to move around and hurt himself. It's really cool that he has a second camera. So like I said, his editing skills are really good. And he's going to slide and he's going to crash. And I want you to take a look at his arm. So this is the importance of having gear. I'm going to pause it right on that spot right there. Let's see if I can move it. That discoloration uh, on his arm right there that is road rash that is a burn if you ever seen a burn it turns a really bad color just like that and then it starts to get really painful and then you start having uh, fluid loss going through that because your skin is actually a very good thermoregulator and it keeps a lot of your fluids and a lot of your temperature and that's why people actually die from burns by being hypothermic Hypo means low, hyper means high. People actually die from uh, being too cold because their skin is burned off. So that is a, another thing in, for another day. We could talk about medical side stuff a lot later. But right here, that is where armor and abrasion resistant material is on your gear. It's there for a reason. It's designed to be on the outside for a reason because that more than likely that is where we're going to slide. But that right there is at minimum second degree road rash. Now it's just like second degree burns, third degree road rash, third degree burns, first degree, first degree, all those different things. It's a friction burn. Road rash is a friction burn. It is going to hurt and it's going to rip off flesh and now your nerve endings are exposed. So this is very painful and I'm really focusing on this part and I'm trying to scare you guys into wearing gear. So let's wear some gear. But let's go ahead and go back to the beginning and talk about how we can really prevent ourselves from crashing in a turn like this. So we're setting up for a turn and we're going to go ahead and look at some of the clues. Let's go back just a little bit. That sign right there is going to let you know, hey, it's a sharp right turn. And then we have something in the road that says slow down. We don't have a massive escape route to the left and our escape route to the right is oncoming traffic. Okay, You see the curve right there. That's going to cause an issue for any type of escaping. If we're going too fast in this curve, especially with those chevrons indicating, hey, it's a sharp curve and we don't have a 
good line of sight here. If we're going too fast in this, we have a possibility of going too wide. And we also have a possibility of going too close to the inside of this turn. And we're, I'm talking about the full lane over here because you can't really judge your perfect line in this situation. You don't know. You don't know what's coming around the corner. You don't know, you know how much of a turn this really is. Is it delayed apex? Is it, is it, what is it? What is it, everybody? We don't know because he's going too fast in this turn. 20 kilometers an hour is actually really fast. I'm just kidding. No, it's not. But we're going to move forward to this and you still cannot see around the turn. And now he's putting the bike down at a really weird angle. He's kind of sitting up just a little bit, but he's going high rate of speed, putting the bike down, not giving enough body position. So he's actually riding outside his limits in this situation. So now we can actually see what's happening. We can actually go and accelerate through the turn. You know, if we did the slow look, press and roll, but he didn't, he went fast looked a little bit and then he pressed his bike down and not putting his body in a good position and he just kept rolling on the throttle to keep the speed up and that's not going to be good for the turn so it's gonna be a low side you're gonna have uh, abrasions right there you can see it right here abrasions on the ground it's gonna slide into the grass and i don't know if he's gonna hit himself that hard on that curb that i was talking about uh, a little bit earlier but man does that look painful so like i said he's got his buddies behind him and they're keeping up and they're trying to they pass that big uh uh, truck on the way here and now we're going to crash okay so like i said you're going to have abrasions there's his buddy those are his headlights and look at this turn you can't even see anything going left on this turn imagine trying to turn left on here it's got the blind turn going on so let's watch out for that there's the massive abrasions and that's not good so guys what can we learn from this uh high rate of speed is going to be playing a huge factor in this same thing with ego trying to keep yourself in front of your buddies when you are supposed to be paying attention to safety lack of gear is going to cause an issue for him for quite a while now instead of going off to the store and buying new gear he's going to have to either go to the hospital or lick his wounds when he's at home for a couple weeks if not months and then he's going to have nerve damage possibly to that arm there's not much I can say about what went good here, but let's learn about what he did wrong and not do that ourselves. So let's use that knowledge. Remember guys, if you like this stuff, let's hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell button and share these videos. I post a video every single day now of this and then a bunch of other stuff too to keep you confident and safe while you ride. With that said, hope you ride safe, be safe, and I'll be seeing you around.